So let me ask you, especially Chris, like for people that are watching this and there are people, and I do believe what Margaret said, that most people want to try to be informed. And, and I even know people, they think they're informed. They get up, they watch their CNN, they know everything that's going on. So like, what would you suggest would be the better source of information for just regular people that, I mean, like I spend three to four hours a day, like researching. Most people don't have that. Most people are not going to be able to do that and dig everything up. So what would be your recommendation for people to get a decent, you know, decent news um, that is available? Well, the problem is most people are passive consumers of what they're fed. Uh, and that's why the corporate media has made war on alternative uh, press outlets through algorithms. Uh, it's, you know, you saw uh, very overt censorship by the media platforms, uh, Google, YouTube, Twitter, during the Biden campaign, uh, shutting out uh, uh, the New York Post from its own Twitter account after it published the revelations on uh, Hunter Biden's laptop, uh, the use of uh, derogatory terms to talk about information like the Podesta emails uh, that were released by WikiLeaks. John Podesta had been uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, uh, calling it misinformation. It's not misinformation. Uh, nobody's ever questioned the veracity of those emails. Um, and so uh, we've created a system where uh, if you don't go searching for credible forms of information and you rely on the mainstream media outlets, then you're gonna get fed <clears throat> garbage of one form of another, whether it's Rachel Maddow spinning you know, lurid tales of Russia, CNN does the same thing, or mm -hmm. Uh, Fox uh, demonizing just about everybody who isn't white, male, and American. Uh, uh, th that's the problem. So I think, like, you know, most consumers of news, I look at particular bylines, uh, not at news organizations. So I think both Matt Taibbi and Glenn Greenwald have done tremendous work on the media. I admire them for it. I don't know how they can find the patience uh, and sanity to sift through all that stuff, but they do, and they're very important. On, and they're important on other issues too, but they're especially important on that issue. Uh, I read um, Amir Haas, uh, Danny Rubenstein uh, in Aretz, the Israeli newspaper for uh, reporting on the Palestinians. I mean, the irony being that these are Israeli Jews. I think Aretz uh, probably uh, you know, for a mainstream publication, uh, the Electronic Intifada is another important source of information. Uh, Margaret writes for Black Agenda Report, another important uh, publication. So I tend, I look for Margaret stuff. Uh, so I, I look more for people, I mean, I'm in the business. So, uh, but that's always- Right, so you case. know, people I, don't know. Yeah, I people know, but I'm saying know. that if you don't, if you're not proactive, it's now almost impossible to get decent information about what's happening. Uh, you know, Al Jazeera is a very important outlet, certainly on the Middle East. Um, but you're right that you know, you've got to, if if you and and if you passively consume what's fed to you by the corporate monolith, um, it's it's worse than the lie of omission. Uh, that used to be the old lie. Now it's just outright fabrication. The whole notion that uh, you know, Russia is responsible for the election of Trump in 2016. And nobody mentions uh, the country that actually interferes massively in our electoral right. process. And that's Israel, right. uh, flying hundreds of members of Congress on junkets, uh, donating uh, money far above the campaign limits, mounting fierce uh, campaigns against student activists, mm -hmm. a stu college students speak who support the boycott divestment sanctions movement, as I do. Uh, so um, it, it, the media landscape has constricted. I mean, in my own career, going back to the early 80s, I've watched the walls close in. Um, and then, of course, uh, voices like mine have been completely marginalized uh, because of that. Uh, and so uh, I, I'm, I'm very worried about, uh, and, and you know, Biden's calling for new domestic terrorism laws. Uh, they, uh, you know, are using, calling, the, there's an open campaign on the part of establishment Democrats calling for people to be removed from the media landscape, assaults against Substack, where Matt yeah. and Glenn and other people write. Um, and so 
I, I think that you know we've what we're seeing is a shift where we were voices like Margaret's and mine were marginalized, uh, but because the ruling elites really have no credibility anymore, and the ruling mm. ideology of neoliberalism has been uncovered as a bankrupt, just a fig leaf for theft on the part of oligarchic elite. I recommend David Harvey's great book, A Brief History of Neoliberalism. It never made economic sense ever. I mean, it was based on outliers like Hayek or this third rate novelist, Ayn Rand, but it was never meant to. It was it was an ideological cover for pillage. Um, I mean, white supremacy functions the same way. So, uh, and, and because there's no answer, because the credibility has collapsed, uh, then voices that critique these centers of power become more dangerous. Uh, and even though they're already marginalized, they're now uh, there are calls by establishment and, and the New York Times and MSNBC and the Washington Post, they cheerlead this because the whole idea is to uh, direct uh, readers or viewers back to these mainstream outlets that have seen their own credibility uh, fall tremendously because of their complicity in you know, a slew of lies, whether it's this ridiculous caliphate. I mean, this uh, podcast, The Caliphate, right. where I was kind of spent seven years in the Middle East. I mean, I, you know, from the moment I heard it, it like was clear. It was a fake. Uh, it was just kind of, uh, I don't know, audio snuff porn for, you know, demonization of Muslims. A uh, uh, Black Agenda report, like I wrote for Truth Dig till we all went on strike and then we got fired. Uh, but that, you know, those outlets uh, uh, were attacked several years ago by this anonymous website called Prop mm -hmm. or Not, Propaganda or Not, as being agents of a foreign power. So, uh, you know, I think that we will see this uh, and with the full complicity of YouTube, Google, uh, these outlets, which are, of course, completely tied to the defense industry and the intelligence industry, what Amazon has, what, a 600 million dollar contract, I think, with the CIA. Isn't he making drones? He's making drones. Is he making drones? Yeah. Okay. He's making uh, drones. Uh, well, he's so, got to make the right. drones deliver the packages. Exactly. There's going to be oh, drones we'll delivering we'll the packages. We'll, uh, so yeah. he, the Mine's drone guy. Yeah. But you're watching, you know, and, and I think that's why so many of us were so outspoken about Julian from the beginning, because mm -hmm. Julian and WikiLeaks were the canary in the coal mine. They were what yes, they went they after are. first. I hardly have stopped there. And they're moving at a very fast pace. And Biden and the Democrats are probably going to be even worse than yes. the Trump administration in terms of shutting down the voices, in particular on the left, um, because the left calls them out for who they are. And so, therefore, our it has dangerous. gotten worse. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely well, going to come from the left, right? But, they, no, but you know, I, to, to Chris's point about how they direct people, uh, now on Twitter, if you uh, read, and I think people should read Chinese media, it will say Chinese government right. site. It doesn't say that for the BBC. BBC, CBC, they get yeah. government oh, yeah. money. Uh, same thing with, with YouTube. So uh, they are working overtime to try to discredit, to make sure uh, that, at, and after prop or not, uh, we got, and other sites were, um, uh, we got fewer eyeballs. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the terminology, but you couldn't find Perfect. ourselves. Right, it's impressions. Yes, so, and I couldn't, we couldn't find, I, yeah. I, no, I no, tried we, to look for articles yeah. I knew I had written yeah, on yeah. Google and could not find them. So, well, we ran, they ran a graph. Uh, so after prop or not, mm -hmm. Truth Dig actually did the digital uh, research. And they ran, so they, at, at the beginning of prop or not, if I'd written an article on imperialism, probably the same for you, uh, uh, then it would come up if you typed imperialism into Google. And it was a recent article. Right. But the referrals from impressions uh, declined over a 12 month period from over 700,000 to below 200,000. And now they're probably about zero. And of course, uh, w one of the major uh, uh, organizations that was attacked by these algorithms was WikiLeaks and Julie. Yep. Uh, but yes, that's exactly right. That's not even conjecture. We, we know that's fact. Yeah, we know it's true. So uh, it takes people, you have to be aware enough to be skeptical in the first place. And then to make the effort 
And as, as Chris said, people are passive consumers. And instead of saying to yourself, wait a minute, this doesn't sound right. Let me look for this. And so then if, if you do know who to follow, if you knew, do know who to follow on social media, you can get some of the truth. But you're talking about, you're talking about people being skeptical, not being passive, knowing they're, or even assuming or thinking they may be lied to. I mean, that's a heavy lift. I, I hate to say this for um for most uh people so we're still struggling and and uh uh doing our our best but they are afraid of even that and that is why they are censoring i also want to say one more thing about uh the corporate media um and uh, uh, the, the issue of Asian hate crimes in the wake of the shooting in Georgia, the New York Times acts as though it has nothing to do mm -hmm. with the way uh, uh, China and other Asian countries are perceived. Right. When, in right. fact, they talk about China being sneaky, the, uh, the Uyghur, I, we could do a separate show about uh, the phoniness of, of uh, that story. Xi Jinping is a tyrant. Um, there are concentration camps, there's forced labor, all of these things that are lies. And Trump, yes, he talked about the China virus, but the New York Times did pretty much the same thing in their reporting on China and COVID and not reporting their successes. So uh, they also uh, have played a role in that. I wanted to say that. Yeah, before. we had on, I had on my show the other day, the Katie Halper show, not useful idiots, but I had on Danny Haifang, your colleague, Margaret, and mm -hmm. we looked at the different images from different newspapers, magazines, totally racist tropes of like China mm -hmm. looking like a, you know, the dragon image, yep. um, ridiculous headlines um and you know i would just say that with the with the substack stuff you know it's not just sadly it's not just corporate media or the usual suspects who are calling people for people to be driven off uh substack uh you have people who claim to be i mean claim to be left i think they're basically neoliberals who are um socially uh progressive um but you know saying that that people are committing violence um you know and this is not about like white supremacists. This is about, you know, people like Glenn Greenwald and just openly calling for people to be removed from platforms, which again, I interviewed Chomsky a couple months ago and asked him about this. And he's like, well, cancel culture has been around forever. It was the McCarthy era. You know, the difference is the left used to oppose it. And I do think that like there are people on the left, it's embarrassing and it's uncomfortable to talk about it, but there are people on the left who have jumped on the bandwagon, whether, whether it's censorship, whether it's, um, you know, not platforming, deplatforming. I mean, again, what is it's? It's just a. It's very disappointing. Well, we should stop letting them call themselves. Yeah, I know. Seriously, <laughs> but it's just. It's just. It's. It's about a. It's about easy moral purity yes. because yeah. it's really easy to go after. There's no cost for going right. after those targets, and in fact, mainstream society cheers them on largely. Uh, right. It's. It, there's a cost uh, to go after. Uh, you know, companies like Goldman Sachs or Raytheon or the security and surveillance right. state. So I really think a lot about a lot of it is about their own self adulation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but I, you know, I lived in Roxbury when I was in seminary and commuted into Harvard. And that's where I learned to hate liberals. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone should listen to the last all those episode. all those people talking about empowering people they never met. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, through through well, and also empowering people um, through you know looking at their own <clears throat> like tr checking their own privilege, making sure that they you know yeah. like no, uh, it, it's it's a long their, story. Their it's not bias. particularly new. I mean, so yeah. I was at Harvard Divinity School. These all these students would go down and pick coffee for a week in Nicaragua, and then spend right. the rest of the semester talking about it. But they wouldn't uh, you know get on the green line and ride twenty minutes out to one of these housing projects where people being warehoused, you know, in appalling conditions. So uh, that's, it's not particularly new. I mean, it, you know, Chomsky's kind of done the best intellectual uh, deconstruction of uh, liberalism and the liberal class. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.